welcome everybody to issue 17 from Counting Right. It is issue 17 of the Grim Gazette. I am your host, T. Morris. You can call me TT Monster or Twitch Dad, and I represent. <laughs> I represent tonight. Amy Bruni's Paranormal Circle. No, I, I, I actually joined Amy Bruni's Paranormal Circle um, uh, during Penhurst Paracon. Check a previous issue for that. You'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. I am a member of Amy Bruni's Paranormal Circle, and I'm pretty excited because there's some nice bennies in there. But I'm also representing Old Spirits Investigations. We are a uh, paranormal team that has just started this journey into the darkness it is myself and phil rossi and a collection of family and friends that are all joining us for investigations if you want to find out more about what we do at osi feel free to go and visit youtube and look up old spirits investigations you'll find us and we will bring you all kinds of paranormal goodness from there ranging from reviews of events all the way up to live paranormal investigations to this, the Grim Gazette, which you can catch live on Tuesdays here at Twitch. But then I've got an edited version that I've got over there. So if you've missed any previous issues of the Grim Gazette, I got back issues over there. Now, what is the Grim Gazette? The Grim Gazette is your weekly dose of weird news, paranormal analysis, and some paranormal deep dives. Our lead story... Our lead story comes from none other than the big Marvinsky. This is a guy who is a regular on the stream. He is also someone that I had had an opportunity to take to Linville Manor for my 55th birthday. And that was hella fun. That was hella fun. But he is offering tonight's lead story, which is this. UK is running out of ghosts. As old spirits are dying off, paranormal experts say. Okay. We are off and running, everybody. Paranormal expert and author Dr. Paul Lee believes the UK has been running out of ghosts as aging spirits are currently dormant or have moved on to the other side. There you go. If that doesn't wake him up, I don't know what will. <clears throat> All right. Britain is facing a ghost shortage as aging spirits are passing over to the other side. According to a leading paranormal expert, Dr. Paul Lee believes that the UK's spectral heritage is in serious decline as many ghosts have been dormant or moved on. The paranormal researcher and author shared, since January 2020, I've been contacting all the reportedly haunted locations on my app and asking if the residents, owners, or staff have experienced any unexplained activity. He continued... So far, I have almost 800 replies and even some supposedly highly haunted places like Conceboro Castle in South Yorkshire, the Eddington Park Hotel in Stratford, said to be one of the most haunted hotels in the UK, and Fortnum and Mason in Piccadilly say they haven't experienced anything in the last few years. This is our, uh, this is our guide, Dr. Paul Lee. Okay. Dr. Lee added that in 2020 with the Daily Star... But it does seem as though many famous ghosts are either dormant or faded away or moved on. He suggested it could be that a spirit had a natural source of energy to begin with, which has dwindled away over time, leaving them without the reserves to manifest anymore. However, Dr. Lee, who hails from Fairstead, Norfolk, and holds a PhD in nuclear physics, which makes sense considering that he is wearing the t-shirt that he's wearing, offers a glimmer of hope, stating it may be that ghosts can be recharged. He concluded, you sometimes hear stories of ghosts suddenly appearing again after many years' absence. The staff at Sheffield's iconic Meltdown Bar have called in a team of experienced paranormal investigators. Let's try that again. <clears throat> the staff at Sheffield's iconic Meltdown Bar have called in a team of experienced paranormal investigators after noticing lights and TVs switching on by themselves, along with a ghostly sighting. Following an increase in these eerie occurrences, the staff at Sheffield's Meltdown Bar sought the help of experts who conducted a thorough investigation of the potentially haunted venue. WAH Paranormal, the group leading the investigation, suggested that the bar's extensive history could be a reason for the supernatural activity. So... Here's the thing. How you doing there, Mason? Good to have you in stream. Here's the thing about 
the Daily Star. I uh, I took a look. I was just about to get dive into this when I saw some of the other headlines that are featured on the Daily Star, such as Asian Hornet UK invasion mapped as Brits told to do one thing if they spot one. Naked alien photos from 1986 show E.T. is white, lanky, and proud of his pecker. Brits face holiday chaos as Spanish locals threaten airport protests over booze. I'm an M&M fan. Here's all you need to know about the 30-pounds summer beauty bag worth 170 uh, pounds. And finally, experts try to lure UFOs to Earth with small handheld nuclear reactors. Yeah. Figured it. Um, I'm wondering about the... Uh... Yeah, it seems like shit. I, I know, I know. I don't think Marv is, is trying to take the piss out of me. But I was trying to figure out, what do I back this up with? Well, how about we go from the Daily Star to the Beeb? Let's go to the BBC, shall we? Frenchtown reels from fortune teller scandal. The town of Agde on the Mediterranean, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm assuming I'm pronouncing that right. Town of Agde on the Mediterranean coast, may be known for its beautiful sandy beaches and year-round sun, but it's also got a reputation for wild sex parties. Okay. Yeah, yeah. This is uh, top quality journalism from the Beeb. <laughs> top quality. <laughs> top quality. <laughs> the town is home to Europe's biggest swinger community. I almost thought that was swimmer community, but no, that's swinger. Swinger community. Tens of thousands of couples head to the town from across Europe every year to swap partners. Let's go. Um, but right now, the town is reeling from an entirely new scandal, which has the rest of France shaking its head in collective bemusement and amusement. It concerns a local fortune teller and the town's mayor, Gilles de Torre. I have no idea if that's proper or not. A former Secret Service officer and police officer. Both are now in jail while under judicial investigation. The fortune teller... Sofia Martinez faces charges of embezzlement, while the mayor is accused of corruption for spending a lavish amount of taxpayers' money on her. Ms. Martinez had a reputation for being able to speak to the dead, according to Mr. Diatua's lawyer. When the mayor asked her to put him in touch with his deceased father, she succeeded. While performing seances, her voice would suddenly appear to take on and change on the tone of the mayor's father. Over the past... Four years, it is alleged that she manipulated the mayor in person and by phone with remarkable ventriloquist skills. He received thousands of mysterious calls from voices of the dead, including angels, some of them urging the mayor to help the fortune teller. And that's where the corruption kicks in. The mayor is alleged to have paid for lavish holidays for Ms. Martinez and her family, including to Polynesia and Thailand, all using public funds. It is alleged that the voices persuaded him to hire several members of her family to work for the town council and also renovate her home. Local businesses with connections to the mayor did the work for free out of fear of losing future contacts with him. With all of the attention, the mayor's lawyer, Jean-Marc Daregad, has been turned into a minor celebrity overnight. It's a crazy story, he tells me at his office near uh, nearby Montpellier. It's incredible because you have a man in politics, mayor and former MP, who is very intelligent. And you discover that a man like that can be manipulated by a woman. I mean, it wouldn't be the first time. Let's let's be honest. I, and you know, but you, you got to wonder when the mayor was suddenly like, you know, the spirits are, are, are calling in and they're and they're they're basically... The spirits are basically saying this. They're saying, they're saying, Okay, this is your father from the other side. And I command you to take care of that lovely fortune teller. Because, you know, she needs a kitchen. I did, have you ever had her tapas? Her tapas are to die for. <laughs> See what I did there? No, listen. I want you to renovate her kitchen. If your messages from the other side are talking about home improvement for somebody else, 
I, I just think that should be right there. That should be a that should be a red flag. You know, come on. It's a trap. But okay, let's let's just let's just press on. Let's see what we got here. Um, <clears throat> this is a woman who came into his life and said, "I can speak to your deceased father." She found a mental weakness in him and exploited it for personal gain. Okay, look, this woman's a fortune teller. She's not a freaking Jedi Knight, okay? I'm sorry, but that's... <laughs> All right. It took a long time before he accepted he had been conned, Mr. Darigadads. But Ms. Martinez's lawyer, Luke... I'm not even going to try that. Um, Abra Kitewitz has a different view. She has admitted betraying the mayor's confidence, but it's not a case of manipulation because she has owned up to what she did. And other clients, including doctors and architects, say she has mystical powers. She revealed details about their lives that no one else knew about. Mm. Mm. I'm very tempted to make a um, to make a reference, but I'm moving on. I'm pushing forward. I'm pushing forward. But let's just say... It's a good thing that she had limited energy vicinity, you know, because had that energy vicinity reached all, all the way over to the States, no telling what would have happened. Wizard, good to see you. Good to see you in stream. Got to watch that energy vicinity. Okay. The lawyers deny it, but locals say it all comes down to sex in a town. Hello there. Sex in a town with a lot of it already. At a Sunsplash Cafe near the town hall, one customer, Jean Max, said... I like the mayor. He's been good to me. He was tricked. Maybe he was in love with her. Another local added, chuckling. For me, sex is at the heart of the scandal. Where there's money involved, I mean, sex is part of it too. They kind of go together. The far right has made significant gains in this part of France in recent years. One of the mayor's most vocal critics is Fabien Varesano, a fast-rising local politician from Marine Le Pen's Reassemblant National Pate. She has called on the mayor to resign. He can be generous in love with lots of different women. That's his personal life. But using taxpayers' money, that is a different story, she says. He has made a mockery of our town. A judge is keeping both the mayor and fortune teller in custody to prevent potential witness tampering. Ms. Martinez... <coughs> <coughs> Ms. Martinez has been moved to solitary confinement after being assaulted at her women's only prison wing with inmates accusing her of witchcraft. <sighs> wow. I mean, didn't know that was still a thing, but there you have it. Okay. So moving on, submitted by none other than Secondhand Souls, Ohio man plans to take a two-person submersible to Titanic depths. To show the industry is safe. After the Ocean Gate tragedy. Now this is not the this is not the submersible that's that that's going down. Okay, that is not the submersible that's going down. But uh, this uh, this is this is from Ohio. Freaking Ohio, baby. It's a trap. An Ohio real estate investor is planning to take a two-person submersible down to titanic level depths to prove that the journey can be carried out safely following the Titan Sub's implosion last year. The investor, Larry Connor, told the Wall Street Journal, I want to show people worldwide that while the ocean is extremely powerful, it can be wonderful and enjoyable and really kind of life-changing if you go about it the right way. If you want life-changing, you can just ask the people who went down on the Titan submersible, okay? That was truly life-changing for them. He's working with Patrick Leahy, a co-founder and CEO of the submersible manufacturer Triton Submarines. They aim to show that such an expedition can be carried out repeatedly and safely despite the implosion of the Ocean Gate sub in June, which killed all five people on board, including the company's CEO, Stockton Rush. And there's the guy. There's the guy who said, yeah, yeah. I mean, I've got a, I've got a Bluetooth controller. I've got a, I've got a, you know, couple of, couple of portholes. We good? Hard no. Yeah. Okay. 
Like he said that Connor called him a few days after the implosion and said, you know, what we need to do is build a sub that can dive to titanic level depths repeatedly and safely and demonstrate to the world that you guys can do that and that Titan was a contraption. Connor, who had been to the Mariana Trench, the deepest ocean trench on Earth, said they planned to do the journey in a two-person vessel called the Triton 4002 Abyssal Explorer, named 4000 for the depths and meters it can reach. He did not say when the trip would take place. Oh, but we'll be watching. Oh, yeah, we're going to be watching. Well, thinner powder, let's get at her. Leahy was one of many industry figures who criticized Ocean Gate before and after the disaster, accusing it of questionable safety standards. After the implosion, he described Russia's approach to persuading people to get on board as quite predatory. Others in the industry and the company also voiced their concerns. A former chief submersible pilot from the company said years before the fatal trip that he was worried Rush would get himself and others killed in a quest to boost his ego. The filmmaker and Titanic explorer James Cameron also weighed in saying he and some engineers had told Ocean Gate officials that using the Titan could lead to catastrophic failure. Now, as many issues as I have with James Cameron, I will say this. When it comes to the Titanic and when it comes to the amount of dives one person has done on the Titanic. Cameron has a really good idea of what he's talking about. And so, yeah, yeah. When James Cameron tells you, you might have some issues with this. I would say, listen to James Cameron. He has a pretty good, he has a pretty good uh, hold on this. The waiver that Titan passengers were required to sign mentioned multiple ways that passengers could die and described the vessel as experimental three times. Previous passengers had also described errors, failed trips, and feeling unsafe. CBS News David Pogue said his trip on the submersible was canceled after the Titan reached 37 feet because of an equipment malfunction, while one diver who made it to the wreckage said there were multiple aborted attempts, calling it a suicide mission. Nevertheless, Rush and his company repeatedly defended the submersible and its design. You know who else came real close with this thing? This is what this this is also very telling. Um, my man, my my Indian, my nerdy Indiana Jones, Josh Gates. He looked at the submersible and they were ready to take him down to the Titanic. And then he walked into that submersible, looked around, then immediately got out and said, "Yeah, I think I'm gonna." you know, put a hold on this until you've worked out some of the kinks. He didn't even, he didn't even dive in the submersible. He looked at it, saw it, probably looked at the Bluetooth game controller. That was the steering device and said, mm, I can barely get my phone to sync up properly and consistently on my car. And you want to take me down using the same technology to steer the thing. I, I know. No, I just don't think so. Subsequent disaster raised concerns with some experts calling on the industry to reassess taking people to such a remote location. But Leahy said he believed that Ocean Gate's problems weren't reflective of the wider industry, adding that class submersibles were considered very safe because of the extensive testing they undergo. Rob McCallum, a former Ocean Gate consultant who had warned Rush about the safety of the Titan, agreed with that assessment. In that sense, Ocean Gate didn't make the industry look bad, McCallum told the journal. It made us look good. <laughs> you can't play Fortnite on a submarine. Yeah, I know. I mean, that's that's the thing. I mean, it just... It, it's some subnautica stuff. I know, right? I mean, it's kind of crazy. Kind of crazy. And Mason, by the way, thank you very much for that follow. I certainly do appreciate it. Certainly do appreciate it. Thank you so much. All right. So, um, how do we top, how do we top, uh, going down? Well, how about we, uh, well, how about we, how about we take off? Oh, wait a second. Man who ran through Virgin Australia plane naked and knocked over a tendon. Yeah, he was arrested. He was arrested. So, so, you know, got that going for us, which is nice. <laughs>
And because it is happening in Australia, you know what's coming next. Australian police officers said the man knocked over an attendant during a sprint on a Virgin Australia flight from Perth to Melbourne. Here we go. A man who allegedly ran naked down the aisle of a plane in the middle of a flight has been arrested. Australian officers said the man knocked over an attendant during his sprint on a flight from Perth to Melbourne and forced the plane to turn around. Police were waiting at Perth Airport when the Virgin Australia flight circled back, and after being detained, he was transferred to hospital for assessment where he remains. <laughs> Thanks for the accent. I hate it. <laughs> Fortunately, it is a short article. It is unclear how or where the passenger removed his clothes. He has been ordered to appear in court on 14 June and has not been formally charged. Virgin Australia apologized to guest impacted by the disruptive passenger in a statement. <laughs> this ain't GTA 5. <laughs> I know, right? Ah, nice little drive-by drive -by article there. Okay. And here's how we, here's how we wrap it up. Here's how we wrap up our weird news segment. Mexican government says the arm of a 19th century mummy came off after mishandling by museum staff. Oh, dear. I mean, you know, I don't know why I find it funny, but I do. It's just, here we go. All right. Whoops. <laughs> yeah, I know. Mexico City. I mean, at least they didn't need it. There is that. Yeah, you know. All right, here we go. Uh, Mexico's Federal Archaeology Agency on Monday accused the conservative governed city of Guana Guanajuanta. Guanajuanto? Uh, yeah. Of mistreating one of the country's famous mummified 19th century bodies. The National Institute of Anthropology and History, INAH, said that during recent renovations at the museum where the mummified bodies are on permanent display, the arm of the one of the mummies, well, came off. One might think the complaint is all about the dignified treatment of corpses buried around the early 1800s and dug up starting in the 1860s because their families could no longer pay burial fees. But in fact, the mummies had been on a somewhat grisly display in glass cases in a museum in that town, the capital of the state of the same name, and towed it around a tourism fair for decades. Some were exhibited in the United States in 2009. What appears to be at the root of the latest dispute in a turf battle between the INAH, which believes it has jurisdiction over the mummies because it says they are national patrimony, and the town, which considers them a tourist attraction. The state and city are governed by the Conservative National Action Party, which the Morena Party, which holds power at the federal level, considers it an arch enemy. On Monday... The Institute said it would demand an accounting of what permits and procedures were followed during the museum renovations. These events confirm that the way the museum's collection was moved is not the correct one, and that far from applying proper corrective and conservation strategies, the actions carried out resulted in damages not only to this body, the Institute wrote in a statement. It did not say what, if any, other bits of the mummies have fallen off. Oh, my God. <clears throat> um, it appears that <laughs> it's the bits part that scares me it appears that this situation is related to the lack of knowledge about proper protocols and the lack of training of the personnel in charge of carrying out these tasks it continued the city government did not immediately respond to requests for comment the preserved corpses were unintentionally mummified when they were buried in crypts in a dry mineral rich soil environment in a mining state some still have hair leathery skin, and their original clothing. The Institute appears to be miffed because personnel in that town, not Institute's own staff, is in charge of the approximately 100 mummies, in part because they were mostly dug up before the Institute was founded in 1939. They remain under local control, something that has rankled federal officials in the past. In 2023, experts from the Institute complained that a traveling display of mummies could pose a health risk to the public. Hallelujah! Holy shit! Where's the Tylenol? Because one of the mummies appeared to have fungal growths. Isn't this how The Last of Us started? I just want to say, I think this was how The Last of Us started. It is not the first time that the extremity of a... 
I might have to read that again. I'm sorry. I might have to read that again. It is not the first time that an extremity of a long dead person became a national political issue. In 1989, the Mexican government weathered a wave of criticism at, after it removed the arm of revolutionary general Alvaro Obregón, se uh, severed in battle in 1915, after being displayed in a jar of formaldehyde in a marble monument for a half century. Visitors said it had become unsightly, and so the arm was incinerated and buried. In 1838, Antonio Lopez de Santa Ana, who served as president of Mexico 11 times, lost his leg in battle and had it buried with honors. By 1844, an angry crowd that had accused him of treason dragged the leg through the streets of Mexico City and apparently destroyed it. Whew. You read stuff like this and, man, it's just... Thursday is one of my days off. Yeah. My off days, I start drinking at noon. Yeah. You don't get to interrupt that. Wow. I do, I, I, I do love the crazy news, man. I do love the crazy news. Okay, everybody. That concludes our news segment. And now we jump over to the wonderful world of the Tickety Talks. Now, this one isn't necessarily paranormal, but it is a follow-up thanks to Secondhand. And uh, once once this girl gets started, you'll know what we're talking about. Here we go. Do you guys remember that girl who was building a tunnel underneath her home? And then she ended up getting shut down because she didn't have any of the permits. Like, she was doing all of this by herself, but... She got shut down because she got too big. She was posting all of it on TikTok. And so people found out and they were like, you can't build a mine underneath your home. So they <laughs> shut it down. Well, she showed back up on my For You page today. She's starting her castle now. So she was mining under her home to create a shelter. But then she was also using the rocks that she excavated out to build a castle. But she hadn't started that yet because she was focusing on the mine. Well, since she got like a cease and desist or whatever for the mine. Yeah. Now she's building her castle. And so in this video, she's like, well, time to start building. And she starts building it. And she realizes she doesn't have enough rock that like she herself personally excavated. So she's on the way to pick her friend up from the airport. And as she's driving back, she drives by a construction site and just pulls up and is like, hey, can I have some of your rocks? And they're like, yeah, okay. So she loads all of those rocks into the back of her vehicle. And now she's building a castle. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> so yeah and uh that is our that is our our take on uh, on tunnel girl now for anyone who hasn't seen it for anyone who hasn't seen it uh you can always go back to one of our back issues of the grim gazette and you can find it it's the thumbnail of, of tunnel girl and it says she delved too deep we go deep into what this girl is up to and I do believe, yeah, she does have a cease and desist, but she has also been putting up complaints on her tickety talks where, yeah, she's kind of upset that it's taking a long time for them to give me the approval to start my tunnel again. And it's, I, yeah, she hasn't given up. I really don't think she has given up. Um, but you can always look, look her up. It, uh, it said she delved too deep, and, and you can find out all the details about Tunnel Girl. Now, this one I'm dedicating. I found this one, and I want to just dedicate this one to Marv. Here you go. <laughs> just, you know, let's play that one more time in case you missed it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, oh, the the best part is she she calls herself an engineer. She calls herself an engineer. Um, she's a lot of things, but no, God. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, God, please, no, 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 <laughs> no. Oh yeah, she calls herself an engineer, and I'm not really sure what she for normal. I don't know exactly what she has her engineering degree in, but oh, which, oh, Three there we go. Normal. But 
she's not an engineer. She is a project engineer. She is a she is a she is a project engineer, but she is not. That does not make you a civic engineer. We, look, we talked about this in the, in the previous episode. Feel free to take a look at the previous episode. And uh, <laughs> what are you talking about? You can still be a dumbass and still drive a train tee. Well, there is that. <laughs> there is that. How are you, Rich? How are you? Good to see you in stream. Okay. Moving on. Again, submitted for the Grim Gazette. Three paranormal videos you should never watch alone. Well, I'm not alone, so let's watch these paranormal videos and let's see what uh, let's see what we can find out about about paranormal activity on the Tickety Talks. Here we go. Videos you should never watch alone. Here we go. Number one. My daughter has informed me that there is a person in her closet that keeps smiling at her. Let's go see. There's a person? Yeah. Can you show me where the person is? Right here. Right here. Right here. Is it, is it Elsa? No. No. No? I'm scared. You're scared? Yeah. Okay. Is there, can you show me where the person is? Uh, is it a, is it a, is it a kid person or a grown up person? Okay. First thing I don't like about this is that this this um this mom is involving her kid in it that the the that kind of bugs me she wants her 15 minutes of fame and uh she's involving her kid in it which is uh yeah it kind of bothers me a bit the other thing too was that she turned the camera away from uh from from the the place where the kid is seeing this thing she turns away and, I mean, a lot of things could have happened. We're looking at this from the mom's perspective. So by turning the camera away, already we've left, we've left, and this is me looking at it from a paranormal perspective. I will admit, I probably was, was, was straying a little further away from that when I was talking about my thoughts about her involving her kid. But that's, that's neither here nor there. Um, this is more about the fact that she turned the camera away from where the kid was saying there was something scaring in her closet. So then what do you do? You set up a camera and you, you watch that footage. You watch that footage. So let's see what, let's see what happens here. It's a grown up person. It's a grown up person. Okay. Cool. You want to wear your Elmo costume? Yeah. Okay. There's a grown up person in your closet. All right. Uh, and it's right there? Yeah. It's my closet. It's your closet. Say, go away, person. <laughs> and again, we, we, we turn the camera away. We turn the camera away. It's a cursor. No, I don't think it's a cursor. You're scared? Yeah. I'm a person. Okay, well, we'll get rid of the person. So the the theory of the theory of kids being able to see what uh, what what grownups can't that has been that 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 has been something I've heard often in paranormal circles. Uh, do I do I buy into that completely? Mm, it's still something of a hard sell for me, and here's why. Uh, I remember being a kid, obviously. I remember being a kid and uh, I didn't have, you know, my imaginary friends were all my stuffies. You know, that that was my thing. I had a vivid imagination as a kid, but I never saw people that weren't there. I I did not necessarily hear um, voices that weren't there. I, you know, I had some pretty intense dreams as a kid, but that was about it. Now, Luna brings up something. What about pets? <sighs> I do think that pets pick up on something a little more because, well, for one thing, their eyesight is different from ours. Their, uh, their hearing is different from ours. And I remember, uh, Jason Hawes 
for a couple of seasons, he would bring in Maddie, which was one of his dogs. And he would take, he, he would take uh, Maddie onto some sites. And I think some of the creepiest stuff that ghost hunters has ever caught involved Maddie. Cause there was one where they were walking along, walk, they were walking through, I think an old hospital, not the old hospital on college Hill, but a hospital. They were walking along and suddenly Maddie stopped. I mean, it was just like, she's, she's walking, she's walking. You don't see, you don't hear Jason give a command. You don't see Jason tug on the tug on the leash at all. But suddenly Maddie just comes to a stop. Actually, no, Maddie wasn't even on a leash. This was a very well-trained dog, right? And it just stopped. And it just went Whoa, like that. Just a soft little warning shot. Like, Whoa. and then that dog, and then like like seconds later, it suddenly skitters back. It's like, it's like, it was the scariest thing I think I've ever, well, the, one of the scariest things I ever saw in Ghost Hunters. So I think it's more possible with pets than it is with kids. But that was an extremely inconclusive video. And honestly, the, the, what the, what the mom should do, if the kid is that freaked out, the mom should go on ahead and do a, uh, do a standard camera, point it in there. See if she picks anything up. And if she doesn't, then she sits down with her kid and go, now watch this video. Blah, 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 blah. See, there's nothing there. Let's go on. If something is there, then she's got to bring in like other paranormal investigators. But eh, you know, okay. So let's see. Uh we we we've seen that video. The other thing though is if you're doing stuff like that and you're involving your kid online. Mm. Mm. Um, I have thoughts. I mean, and I, and I'm, I'm the first one to admit it. I'm the first one to admit it. I have a video of me with my kiddo. We did two of these videos. Um, we, we were basically doing a spoof of man versus wild. We called it man versus child. And there was one where Sam was two years old. And there was one where Sam was three years old and they were fun to do. They were fun to do, but People were saying, you should make an entire series of that. And I'm like, I'm not going to do that. One, it was just taking up too much time. Two, I didn't know how Sam would feel about that. And three, especially when 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 they would reach a certain age, whether it's tween or teen, it starts to get awkward. And, um, I, you know, I just did the two episodes. They were fun. I'm glad I did them. Real reason the kid is a better actor. Well, that too, Richie. You've you've met my daughter, so you know exactly. You know exactly. But there's that. Okay. Um, so I have thoughts. Anyway, so let's go back to this one video. We've got one video that you should remember, don't watch that video alone. Now here's the second video that we're not supposed to watch alone. All right. So obviously we are now doing, um, well, you know, second second verse, scary as the first. We'll have it to see. Uh, but this is a, a homemade spirit board, okay? It's a homemade spirit board. Now, yeah, they're more commonly known as Ouija boards, but remember, Ouija is the, Ouija is the, is the, the brand that was started up by the Parker brothers across, uh, across time, they've been known as spirit wards or the Luigi board, if you want to call that. And, um, we are, uh, this one's homemade. So props to them for doing, uh, some home crafts. And of course they've dimmed the lights. They got candles lit. And as far as we know, they've started it up. Let's see what happens. Oh, Okay. Stall high. Yeah. Hey. 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 Okay. 
All right, let's see this again. Let's see this again. So they're goofing around with a homemade, goofing around with a homemade spirit board. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm not sure if that's an optical illusion or not, but watch watch what happens when she picks up the glass. Let me see. I'm trying to. I don't think I can blow up the video anymore. No, I can't. It just it just does the the the, the text. Okay. <clears throat> Watch watch how she picks si, up the glass. Ta ned på god dagen. I'm going to do that. I'm going to look at the glass one more time. So she tops off her she tops off her soda. Si, si ta ned på god dagen. No? No. Okay. So. Hmm. Well, obviously, there's nobody. Okay, so so disclaimer: there's no nobody underneath the table. There's nobody underneath the table. What did she do with the glass? Okay. Um, the glass, that was interesting. But these are all, I mean, I don't know about the glass, but the chandelier could easily be rigged. The chandelier could easily be rigged. Um, it depends on on the intent of the people shooting the video. I... Mm, this one that this is this is kind of a harder sell. This is kind of a harder sell. Because the other thing I noticed too was that okay, the thing that I find a little sus. Um, the thing I also find a little sus is this, right? She takes the drink, slides over. Okay, pretty effing creepy. Pretty effing creepy. That's interesting, right? And um, she's all freaked out. Oh, oh. where's the glass? Where's the glass? You mean to tell me that you have something happen, right? And then you're you're not going to drink out of that glass, but it's gone. It it is absolutely gone. So so later in the night, they just said, "Yeah, that was pretty freaky. What happened to the glass? Let's get it out of here." Uh, Burnett's hand was under the table when that happened. Oh, let me see that. Hold on, let me see that. Look at that. Good catch. Good catch. And it stays under the table. It stays under the table. Now, one way you could pull that off. One way you could pull that off. And it's a real simple trick. You just need to have and if and if her if her hand is underneath the table like that, she could easily have a magnet underneath that and just drag that sucker on over because the thing i'm noticing too is like i said this this glass is conveniently now completely out of the picture i mean it's 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 not even up here it's not even down there it's just gone and it's a it's a little these are the kind of these are the kind of kind of details you got to get into when it comes to debunking this stuff she offers a drink to her friend, but did you notice that on neither side of her friend is there a glass for her to drink from? 
So, yeah, sus. And then we have, and then we have this this little this little trick right here. And what? Uh, yeah. <laughs> cute ladies, very cute, very cute. You have a lot to be proud of. Congratulations on your 15 seconds of fame on uh, on the tickety talks. <sighs> okay, here we go. Yeah. Uh, um. I'll go ahead. Nice try, though. Nice try. Nice try. You know. Bluetooth voice activation. <laughs> Who knows? Okay, it depends on how on how techy the girls are. That that is that that is that is going to be the big thing. How how resourceful are these uh, are these these ladies? And you know, STEM is a thing. It's a worldwide thing. So who knows? Okay, here we go. So again, don't watch that video by yourself, everybody. Don't watch that video by yourself. Now here's the third paranormal video you shouldn't watch by yourself. Something and this is gonna be nearly a minute. All right, so here we go. All right, so My first my first red flag on this my first red flag on this Bro, that is not the way you wear a baseball cap You better be having a bad hair day But you should not be wearing a baseball cap like that Okay, bro there are just some things that I have a low tolerance for, and that's one of them. All right. <clears throat> so. Fred Durst vibes. <laughs> and here we go. Something is watching me. If you've had the feeling, you know what I'm talking about. I'm playing only up in my office. Something keeps passing by this window. I'm going to, I just propped up the phone here, and I'm going to play... If you're walking by my office, I want you to knock it off. No, no. Holy. Is that you making all that noise back there? No. This thing's always. Do I have to watch this all the way through? Do, do, do I have to watch this all the way through, chat? Do I? <laughs> <laughs> the unanimous. Bruh, no, <laughs> just no, no, please, please don't, please. Don't. I mean, what, what? Thursday is one of my days off. Why are people, why are one people? Days I start drinking at noon. Why do they do this? You don't get to interrupt that. <laughs> oh my God. I mean, well, that's the thing, isn't it? Um, I got to see what happens next. I want. I want to see if. I want to see if he catches a shadow figure. I want to see. I want to see. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Hands up. There are some people in. There are some people watching chat right now that are like, no, no. no. I want to see how far he pushes it. I want to see how far he pushes it. Because I mean, come on. He's wearing the baseball cap backwards. He's asking for it. Ah. <sighs> I love the comments right here. Proceeds to watch alone. First video. Kids don't lie at that age. It's the truth. Hides in the comment section. Parents shouldn't be never ignored what kids are saying. They see what we cannot. Oh, you poor misguided soul. Uh, never watch these alone. Me watching them alone. Uh, okay. <laughs> Going to the bathroom while you do this. I do want to see how good he is at trying, at trying to BS. See, that's the morbid, that's the morbid fascination. This is why videos like this get, dear God, they have nearly 2,500 comments and over 330,000 likes. Okay, so we've got, so what else is flying? Come on. What's next? You need to get out. Dude, will you knock it off, please? You got to get out. You're you're gonna lock. All right. Who had shadow figure? Who had shadow figure? I mean, I will say, 
Props to this guy's props to this guy's kid for wearing a bed sheet. For wearing a bed sheet. You got to get out. You're you're going to lock yourself in the laundry room again. You're not leaving. He's got Oh, you're absolutely right, Spence. He's got mad filmmaking skills. He's got mad filmmaking skills. Oh, now, I'm going to call that one right there. I'm going to call that one right there. This is clever. Yeah, and very nice house, by out. the way. Very nice house. You're, you're going to lock yourself in the laundry room again? Now, you're hang on. Leaving? I want to see if I can pause this. Three. Anybody want to take a, take a gander at this? Look at this. Focus, 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 focus. Blurry. I mean, wow. Wow, this guy this guy has got this guy has got mad uh Steve Prozac shippy vibes happening. Oh my god, dude. I, but you know what? I'm gonna go back to what uh one of my mods of the most and one of my uh team members over at uh, OSI, what uh Nick Spencer said. Mad, I mean rock solid filmmaking skills. You know, I mean because even even if you if you look if if you look up this video, you can actually see the string. The string is just masked out, but you can you can make it out right about here, uh, in the lower right corner. But this was I got it. I'm I'm gonna give I'm gonna get I'm I'm at least give him this. I'm gonna give him that was well put together. That was well put together. I'm sorry I'm sorry, Cammy. The best viewers are already here. Thank you very much. The best viewers are already here, uh, and unfortunately, you are not. Bless. Bless, everybody. Bless. Namaste. Fish. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and, I get, and I get some twerking from, from, from Luna. <laughs> Thank you, Luna. Okay, everybody. Um, somebody that we love, and you know her. Uh, this is Holly Weird Paranormal, Haunted L.A. Girl. You're going to want to give her a follow. And I wanted to see this because this whole thing about, about Holly Weird, this was her first ever visit to Gettysburg. And I wanted to see, I haven't, I haven't watched this. So this is brand spanking new. Let's see what we got here. You're present with me. I was also told about um, stories of people hearing what sounds like children. Um, other stories, a part of this bed and breakfast is uh, seeing apparitions of Union soldiers, um, hearing their footsteps in the attic and on this floor when you're, I guess so. So am I talking to a Union soldier as of right now? So just so you know what she's using, she is using Ghost Tube Vox and behind her, you'll see a dead bell. Dead Bell is a new product from the folks over at Ghost Stop. It's been getting mixed reviews. Some people really enjoy it. I know that uh, that Tammy really likes it. There's some other people that are like, eh, it's a little sus. But I've been seeing it. I've been I've been seeing it. It's 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 definitely got a lot of. Some people either think they they either love it or they hate it. So um, yeah, you have a you have a safe drive back, Scott. So. Make that what you will, but that is what's going on there. So she is at her haunted uh, uh, bed and breakfast in Gettysburg, PA. The The bell just went off, and she's using Ghost Tube Vox. Let's see if she catches anything. I'm hearing their footsteps in the attic and on this floor when you're... I guess so. <laughs> so am I she's delightful. To a union soldier as of right now. Is there a Union soldier here? Do you need help? Perfect. Welcome. Can you tap the bell to let me know how many of you guys are here? Tap it to count how many soldiers are here. Is there one? Are there two? Are there three? Are there four? Are there five? Are there six? Are there seven? Okay, there's seven of you. All right, it's a party. And this just went on saying something. So there's seven of you guys here. 
here present with me. <laughs> okay, it's a party. Um, so here's the thing that's interesting about, and and I, I it would have been really interesting if, if it actually had gone off seven times. I think that would have been a bit more compelling. But what I do find interesting about that was is that it did go off at seven. And something to know about the properties, like the bed and breakfasts and things like that. Yes, Gettysburg has its fair share of haunted restaurants and haunted haunted be, uh, bed and breakfasts. And one of the reasons why was because if it was a building, if there was something in the area that could serve as, um, that could serve as any kind of hospital or or command command setup, yeah. That happened often. That happened often in Gettysburg. So could it be possible? Um, I think a lot of it has to deal with one thing I don't know about uh, about Tammy set up there was how sensitive she had set the the dead bell on. How much reliance does Tammy have on said dead bell? Uh, she also had ghost tube Vox running. But yeah, uh, there 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 are a lot of factors involved uh, in 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 her investigation. And, and while I don't, I would not debunk that because quite honestly, how could you debunk it? I mean, unless you could say, well, the, 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 uh, the dead bell is, is questionable for a device. I know that Phil's got some interesting results from it. And I also know that, uh, Tammy has said she's gotten some, some results from it. So if you're putting your faith in the dead bell, then I would say that, le that, that lends that clip for something compelling. That's definitely a compelling uh, result. I know I would love to uh, to somehow either. Well, actually, we're we're <clears throat> we're, we're trying to see. <coughs> we're trying to see if we can get Tammy out here for an investigation. Um, still a big question mark. We're gonna to try to figure out where and when we can uh, we we can we can make it happen. But yeah, uh, she's she's one of those people I trust, and and I, I love watching her. Make sure to give her a follow on Tickety Talk. Make sure to give her a follow pretty much everywhere you find Holly Weird Paranormal. Uh, Tammy's pretty awesome. She's great. Hey, how you doing there, Sonny? And with that, we reach the end of part one of issue seventeen of the Grim Gazette. We will be coming back in just a few minutes with part two. And yeah, remember, if you want to have a weird article that's featured in the opening, but if you've got a, a paranormal clip you'd like me to kind of analyze and take a closer look at, by all means, please make sure to drop that in the Discord in the room called Grim Gazette. You can also leave us a comment on the... Um, different episodes that we have of Grim Gazette available over at YouTube. So there are all different ways that you can be a part of this. And the more audience participation we have, the more stuff we have to comment on. But right now we are up on a break. So please make sure to take care of yourselves. If uh, you haven't had water, please get some water. If you haven't uh, hydrated in any way, please do hydrate because, you know, hydrate or dehydrate. Want to make sure you're taking care of yourselves. The other thing you want to make sure you do is a stretch. Get, a, get in a stretch. Walk around a bit. Just take care of yourself. And if you haven't taken your meds, please, if you haven't taken your meds, take your meds now. That would, that would be good. All right, everybody. So uh, we will be back right after this break. Remember, stay weird. <laughs> 